Hello and welcome everyone, I'm back with another review and today we'll examine Assassin's Creed Syndicate. With Syndicate faring relatively poorly when it comes to sales, why are more people choosing to skip this installment? Why do so many dislike this game? Where do the criticisms lie? In this video, I'll tell you about my experience and my perspective while playing Syndicate. It might be able to help you find a new perspective or maybe help you better understand why some people find this game fun and charming, while others might find it tedious or boring. And if you haven't played this game yet, maybe it'll be worth trying depending on what you take away from this video. Syndicate is the ninth major installment in the main series released on October 23rd, 2015 for consoles and a month later on November 19th for PC. It takes place in 1868 Victorian London and you'll play as either Jacob or Evie Fry depending on the current mission. In the open world, however, you'll be able to freely switch between the two. Like its predecessor, Unity, it runs on the same engine and looks stunning, although you can visibly see that Ubisoft has scaled back their ambition. The streets aren't packed to the brim with people like a can of sardines, and fewer buildings are fully built with intricate interiors. But who can blame them? We can blame them, and I do blame them. Ironically, Unity divided the fan base of the community with its messy launch and has only now started to win the hearts of the fans years later. But why is this not the case for Syndicate? And after the disastrous launch of Unity, Ubisoft seemed determined to not make that same mistake. One might think this was a good thing, right? But what did the fans get out of it? We got Syndicate, a cut down version of Unity, less bugs, yes, but perhaps less of other things too. It's probably for this reason Unity is looked upon more favorably than Syndicate. Syndicate had a tough task if it was the top Unity and it falls short, with you determining the severity. 19th century London, however, is a spectacular sight. The smog-filled air will practically give you lung cancer as you live vicariously through Evie or Jacob Fry. That is to say, it looks rather extraordinary. You'll see the iconic smokestacks that were also present in films such as Mary Poppins. Respiratory illnesses and poor labor conditions have never looked better. There aren't many games that let you explore any city, place, or region in this manner, and it's for that reason alone. All Assassin's Creed's are held in a special place in my heart, whether they are good or bad. London and Syndicate is well built and the dynamic weather adds life to the city as you'll be able to experience it in more than one way. There are plenty of historical cameos in this game, perhaps more than any other Assassin's Creed in recent memory. After all, the Industrial Revolution must have been quite a time to be alive. Revolutionary in just about every department, not just industry, as the world is ushered into the modern age. The eccentric historical figures make grand entrances, and that was a bit of fun, but their respective side quests are hit or miss. Luckily for you, the side missions are just that, on the side, and not required to progress the main story. I will have the spaghetti with a side salad. Okay. If the salad is on top, I send it back. Thankfully, Ubisoft wasn't shoving time-saving microtransactions into your face just yet. But just you wait. There are plenty of things to do in the city. The game has plenty of collectibles and side missions allowing you to explore every nook and cranny London has to offer. Not all side missions are noteworthy, but you do have the option to hijack trains, race carriages, and participate in an underground fight club to test your mettle. The collectibles in the game are scattered throughout the city and are near addicting sometimes, enough for me to go out of my way to hunt them down. These will help you obtain enough materials to upgrade your gear. However, the weapons and armor upgrading system in this game has been stripped down, making it feel kind of bare, making the payoff for hunting down the material somewhat of a letdown because you have very few choices for weapons as well as outfits. Like in Unity, you'll have access to a hideout which can provide passive income which you can then use to buy new weapons and cosmetics. There are a few cosmetic options, and while less than what you would get in Unity, they'll still provide you with a few options you may like, but of course I would have liked to have more options. Traversal through the city was a lot of fun, as there's something mesmerizing about traversing London on foot, in a carriage, over the rooftops, and through the air. You have your standard free running or parkour on foot that works smoothly, seamlessly, and for the most part just as well as any other modern Assassin's Creed game. London isn't as tightly packed and therefore isn't as nice a playground for parkour as Paris from Unity, which has reclaimed pole position as one of the best parkour experiences, but still works as well here as the system has undergone years of refinement. Aside from free running, you have the ability to steal carriages and drive them through the city. You have the freedom to drive around London with a 1, or if you're feeling particularly brave, a 2 horsepower carriage. Much like your characters, the driving controls are well done, responsive, and gives you complete control of the carriage as you power slide and wreak havoc and destruction throughout the city, and the game rewards you for doing so. 
This mode of transportation allows you to travel the city in a different way and allows you to experience it in a different way as well. I enjoyed the missions involving carriages. It puts a touch of Grand Theft Auto into the game without it being overbearing. The streets of London are wide, and because of that, you won't always have the option of hopping from rooftop to rooftop. The game remedies this by giving you a rope launcher at some point, and it will make traversal much faster, and also very different from any other Assassin's Creed game. I found the rope launcher to be a nice addition, and not an immersion breaker, or cheating like some did, and it's perhaps why I like this game more than most people. I saw the rope launcher as a tool invented through the natural progression of technology. My experience with the rope launcher was that it allowed me a means of traversal different and unique from simply climbing the walls. Scaling tall buildings faster than ever and crossing busy intersections faster than ever meant this game feels faster, and I rather enjoyed the game pacing. I think this game needed this kind of pacing otherwise the game would have felt quite shallow as the story is quite light. Like the carriage, the rope launcher gave me a unique perspective of the city. Being able to zip line over shorter buildings added just enough Batman into my Assassin's Creed. I enjoyed being able to explore London with a variety of tools to help me get around. Some have complaints about the characters, or perhaps their lack of character. I do agree with most people's assessment that Jacob and Evie are one-dimensional. Looking back on the game, I realize, wow, they really are. However, they are quite different from one another, and give you two different personalities. And it's when they come together when this really shines. The dialogue is quick, witty, and a lot of fun to listen to. This is easily one of the highlights of the game. The interactions between the twins was something I looked forward to in between missions, as I almost always got a good laugh. The story is surprisingly average, but I found myself playing this Assassin's Creed more for the gameplay and the setting, meaning the story took a back seat. What would have made the story better would be if they had an arc where Jacob's recklessness somehow put Evie in danger, or a chapter where Evie learns that not everything can always go according to plan. It needed a little something extra that can show growth in each character while acknowledging each other's strengths and their own shortcomings. I think this would have added some depth to the story as well as an extra dimension to the characters. My only complaint is that they missed an opportunity since this is one of the few Assassin's Creed games you get to play as two protagonists. Evie and Jacob remain at the end of the game the same way they started and that's a disappointment. But as it stands, the story itself is rather average and straightforward, but still a lot of fun with the dialogue between the siblings. But, to be fair, I feel as if most of the more modern Assassin's Creed stories have been getting weaker, especially in Origins and Odyssey. More emphasis has been put into the worlds, and not the narrative. Thus, by comparison, Syndicate was more than serviceable, relatively, but ultimately average. Stealth in Syndicate works well. Assassinations are powerful and therefore stealth plays a major role. You have a wide array of assassination abilities including double takedowns, double air takedowns, ledge and corner takedowns to round things off. There are also plenty of environmental kill options and other weapons at your disposal such as a pistol or throwing knives. I found combat to be fun, I know some others would disagree, but seeing Jacob beat someone with brass knuckles or seeing Evie wield her cane sword with devastating effect never got old. Combat was fast, flashy, brutal, and yet sometimes elegant. The combat can be quite challenging at times, especially earlier on, and that's great. Taking on too many enemies can be really tough, and taking on a group of enemies that outlevel you is almost a death sentence. Like Unity, the AI is smarter, and it really makes you think about how you want to approach the situation. This game adds the ability for combo finishers, and although I never mastered the technique myself, it was cool to look at when I inadvertently pulled it off. In addition to your standard attack, you have your counter as well as a few sidearms at your disposal to use during and out of combat. I did find the combo system similar to the Batman Arkham series. The only thing lacking from the combat was weapon variety, leading to a somewhat one-dimensional style of fighting but I felt the combat itself to be just as fluid as other Assassin's Creed games of its generation. The progression system, on the other hand, was fairly simple. You finish a mission, and you'll gain experience to earn skill points to put into skills. Once you spend the points, you then level up, which then allows you to continue on to the next mission and face tougher enemies and challenges. The system is reversed. The only drawback was that the differences between Jacob and Evie were negligible, with each twin sharing by and large the same skill set. For the most part, Jacob can stealth just as well as Evie, and Evie can brawl just as fiercely as Jacob. But this does allow you to play Jacob or Evie without sacrificing too many perks of the other. The mission structure is fairly straightforward. You are free to roam around London and complete world events with whichever character you like better. But main missions and some side missions as well are locked to a specific character. It's unfortunate it's done this way because Evie is relegated to the sidelines for much of the latter half of the game, even though I enjoyed playing as her more. She's even pushed to the side on the cover of the game. 
However, I found the main missions to be enjoyable. There is a nice blend of reconnaissance and assassination missions. The assassination missions are very well designed, giving you multiple angles of attack. Completing optional objectives opens new doors for a unique kill opportunity and nets you additional points of entries, sometimes more challenging than the ones given to you at the start. Even without the optional objectives, the buildings for the main missions are fully built, with an interior with plenty of carefully placed hiding spots and multiple points of entry to allow you a level of creative freedom equal to that of Unity and higher than that of most other Assassin's Creed's. To sum things up, I really enjoyed Assassin's Creed Syndicate. On the surface level, it has a fun cast of characters and an average but more than serviceable story. The interactions between Jacob and Evie are funny and natural. Combat was fast and action packed with just enough challenge to keep you on your toes. On a deeper level, 1868 Industrial Revolution London is brilliant and traversal through the city was a blast. Missions are very well designed and well crafted giving the player plenty of creative freedom to successfully carry out the mission. The game certainly has its shortcomings in some departments. I would have liked the twins to be developed further, for them to have implemented a more well thought out skill tree and have a much more robust customization ecosystem. But I didn't let these stop me from enjoying the aspects of the game that were done well. I found the things the game does well outweighed the shortcomings by a fair margin. However, I understand that this will vary from person to person as each person values different things from an Assassin's Creed game. If you didn't like this game for one reason or another, then your opinions are certainly valid, as you may place greater emphasis on certain aspects of the game that differ from mine. These are just my thoughts and my perspective of the game, and how I was ultimately able to find enjoyment from Syndicate. But if you have yet to play this game, and you're in the market for an open world game with great stealth, fast combat, and a colorful cast of characters, and most importantly, a vibrant and beautiful world that is a pleasure to explore, then this game may be for you. If you've played this game, what was your experience like? If you have any comments, leave them below. Don't forget to subscribe, and you can find me in a few other places. And let me know what I should talk about next. Until next time, see ya.